Okay, we're going to take a look at uh, sample question two from the long question, uh, the 2020 sample questions. Uh, it says, peaches and nectarines are substitute goods and both are produced under condi conditions of competitive long-run equilibrium. First of all, I talk about perfect competition, perfect competition, perfect competition. Well, if you see competitive market, uh, that means perfect competition. It's one of the annoying things of the 10,000 annoying things about AP. Uh, we always talk about perfect competition. Well, they'll just say it's in a competitive market that means perfect competition. So just knowing that, we know that we're gonna have a graph situation like this. So for peaches and for nectarines, this is our market since the first question is about choice and the peach industry. Uh, I have the peach market, okay? which is all peach farmers. It could be called peach industry, okay? Uh, so market industry interchangeable. And then we have the individual firm, okay? Which I have here is Joyce's Peach Farm. And Joyce uh, discovers a technological breakthrough that only reduces the cost of producing peaches. Explain how the change in technology will affect each of the following for Joyce. Super important. Explain how the change in technology will affect each of the following for Joyce. Not for the market, at least not yet. That comes in a future question. So, you know, AP is great at this, tripping you up by just at the end saying it's for Joyce, knowing that one third of the people are going to do it for the market. So they got one third off course already. Okay. I wish they bolded it or something like that, but they don't. Okay, so you can uh, deduce if there's lower costs, right? And through technology, what is likely to happen to quantity of peaches produced? Well, it's gonna increase, right? Her quantity is going to increase, okay? Uh, if we wanted to take a look at, graphically, it reduces the cost we're gonna draw in a new marginal cost. I know it might be hard to see. Let me get a different dry erase. And a new average total cost. Okay. All right, you can see that the quantity, here's the new MC, the quantity has increased. Okay. Uh, I'd rather you just kind of follow your logic, but it, you know, if the graphing helps, uh, go ahead and do that. You should have plenty of time. Uh, the trick question, what's gonna happen to the price of peaches for Joyce? No, I do not want my debit card pulling up there. Okay, uh, if you saw my debit card number and you go shopping, you're gonna be in big trouble, okay. Uh, unless you go to Starbucks, because you know they already have my card on file. So, uh, what's going to happen to the price of peaches? Trick question. The price of peaches is determined by the market. Your temptation is to say she's going to lower her prices. Why would she lower her prices? She's now going to make more profit. Okay. Uh, so the price of peaches remains the same. Joyce's price remains the same because the market price remains the same. She's a price taker, right? Um, the market determines the price. Nothing's changed in the market yet. Anyway. What's going to happen to Joyce's short-run profits? Well, those are going to increase because the price remained the same. And now she's gone from long-run equilibrium, which they told us, to now having a region of profit. Uh, likely scenario, okay? We're not taking this test, we're taking the test that's different from this. So I'm gonna try to prepare you. The likely thing is they're going to give you some graphs since you can't do your own graphs. The likely thing is they're gonna give you a graph that's a got the cost curves, etc., and you're gonna have to analyze it. Okay, so if that's the case, what's our new region of uh, profit? 
Well, that would be uh, this region here. Okay. All right. Okay. So her short run, her quantity is going to increase. The price remains the same. She likes this price. And what's going to happen to her short run profits? Those are going to increase, right? It's going to go from normal profit or economic profit equaling zero to this region of positive economic profit. Okay. All right. Uh, and again, we're not taking this test. We're taking a different test. So let's say Joyce, her farmers go on strike. Okay. What's going to happen? Well, her costs are going to go up. Okay. Her quantity would decrease. What's going to happen to the price? It would remain the same. The market doesn't care that her workers went on strike. And what's going to happen to her short run profits? They would decrease. Okay. So be prepared for the inverse Okay, of what would happen. All right, uh, part D is about the market. What's gonna happen to the market price or the industry price of peaches uh, after they all adopt new technology? Well, new technology is gonna increase the supply and the market price after technology is implemented, it's going to go down. Okay. And what is going to happen to the quantity of peaches produced? This is still under the category of the market or the industry. Well, the quantity of peaches produced has increased, right? So price decrease and quantity increase, right? The classic, what happens when there's an increase in supply? Okay, uh, part F and G, we move to nectarines. They kind of set us up for that with the intro. Uh, and I somewhat recommend just doing a quick scan of the, all of the questions, you know, uh, so you know kind of where they're going, right? Because my first thought when they say the first thing is their substitute goods, well, the first question is going to be about substitute goods. No, we've gone through part uh, E and there is nothing about substitute goods yet. Okay, so now we're going to get to uh, the nectarine market. And through the magic of the internet, I have made the graph for the nectarine market, which is, again, a perfect competition. But this time, I'm only worried, this is the nectarine market, this is the labor market. You don't need, there is no nectarine farmer, so I don't need to make a whole nother graph for Susie nectarine farmer. Uh, the new technology is not applicable to the production of nectarines. Explain how the changes that occurred in the peach industry will affect each of the following in the nectarine industry. All right, it does say explain, okay. So it's going to say, you know, how will it affect, well, there's substitutes. So if the price of peaches goes down, what's going to happen to the price of nectarines? Well, price of peaches, uh, demand for nectarines. If price of peaches goes down, demand for nectarines goes down, right? It's only logical because people are going to, migrate towards peaches away from nect nectarines, decreasing the demand. So it does say explain, so say price of nectarines decreases because the demand for nectarines will go down due to the lower price of peaches. Okay, what's going to happen to the quantity of nectarines? Well, there's going to be a decrease in the quantity of nectarines. And then the labor market for nectarines. Now this is uh, a little bit tricky. Um, explain how the technological breakthrough in the peach industry will affect each of the following in the labor market for nectarine workers. The wage rate for nectarine workers. Okay. Well, because we're in a... Uh, perfectly competitive labor market. That means that 
workers are interchangeable from nectarine farms to peach farms to working, you know, at a box factory to working wherever. Okay. This isn't specialized work with all due respect to nectarine workers, which means the supply and demand uh, really comes back to this is uh, the labor market for the entire country. Okay. And determines the wage. So I would argue, and I don't uh, have proof of this because I don't have the answer, but the, the wage would remain the same because workers would leave and some, you know, would stay. The demand for the workers would decrease, but the supply of workers in the nectarine market would also decrease because they would leave to go to other farms, to banana farms, to peach farms, to orange farms. So I would say the wage rate would remain the same. And then what would happen to uh, the number of nectarine workers hired? Well, that would obviously decrease, right? Because uh, there's going to be, you know, fewer people in the nectarine market as there's not as much demand. Uh, there would not be as many workers. Okay. All right. So that's that question. Uh, you know, if you, some key things. If you see market or industry, those are the same thing. If you see competitive market, that means perfect competition. They did not talk about, you know, is it an efficient market? Efficient always refers to allocative efficiency. All right. Productive efficiency must be explained, must be enunciated, okay? So if they say efficient, it always means allocatively efficient. Uh, productively efficient must be said. So uh, another thing they could have asked was, um, you know, what would be the cross elasticity of demand of peaches and um, nectarines? Well, the cross elasticity of demand would have to have a positive value, okay? And then they might ask, well, nectarines and whipped cream are complements. What would be the cross elasticity of demand of nectarines and whipped cream? Well, if they're complements, the cross elasticity of demand would be negative. So, so those are some of the things that, that could be put in there. Of of course you want to get every question right. Of course you do. It's okay if you don't. Okay. Uh, you know, don't panic or anything. Everything comes down to, you know, especially perfect competition. There's, there's just only so many ways it can go, which is why I think sometimes they are, uh, so ambiguous in their terminology. Why don't they just say it's a perfectly competitive market, perfectly competitive industry? Well, because they can throw some people off by just saying it's a competitive market. Okay, uh, I'll address some of the other questions in the next video.